Good morning, you guys. Welcome to the Atlantic Ocean. We were on our way from Durban, which was in South Africa, which is where we were in the last port. And we're heading to Argentina, to San Lorenzo, which is a small port in Rio Parana, very close to Buenos Aires and Puerto Rosario, which is where Leo Messi is from. So yeah, very exciting place to go to. I am keeping the four to eight watch. It is 7.20 in the morning. Basically kept busy this entire morning planning the routes. So this is another port called Bahia Blanca, which is in Argentina, which is where we would be going a bit later after San Lorenzo. So from San Lorenzo we go to Nicochia and from Nicochia we are going to Bahia Blanca after which we're going to be crossing the beautiful Megalin Straits and heading into the Pacific Ocean. So you're going to see a beautiful time lapse of that in the future for sure. So stay tuned. Today is a Saturday. So it's basically a holiday for everyone on board except for the navigation officers and the duty engineers. Uh, our ship isn't unmanned. So even the engineers keep watch. So they have an equal amount of workload on them. So it's really hard on them as well. They don't get any offs. Since we're in the Atlantic Ocean, I'll show you guys how we spend our weekends when we're out at sea. We have no special operations happening at the moment. So everyone's just going to be spending their time doing routine stuff on a weekend. I'm going to show you how I, as an additional chief mate, spend my time out at sea. It's a beautiful, beautiful sunrise this morning, you guys. Something that I absolutely love about the photo eight watch is the sunrise and the sunset. I get to see everything. As a second mate, I would never see the morning sky. I would never get golden hour. And it was always really, really hard for me to shoot it. But look at this. I am standing right here and the skyline is absolutely gorgeous. Getting up at 4 o'clock in the morning is really hard compared to getting up at midnight because back home we're normally awake till midnight so staying up, being awake at that time is not too bad. But 4 o'clock is when you're in deep sleep and it's so hard, I struggle with it every morning. I'm also doing this watch after a very long time. The last time I did this watch, I went up at 10 years So it's pretty insane. But the transition has been a lot of fun. So while I have time, I figured I'd give you guys a quick pitch to it. We have a chart table on this ship, which is something I didn't have on the Oddfell ships that I was sailing on. Yeah, a lot is different to the Oddfell ships. As you guys can see, the bridge is a traditional bridge. It's not an integrated, enclosed bridge like we had on my previous ships. We actually have a bridge wing with a compass repeater outside. I personally really enjoy the traditional bridge while the enclosed bridge looked epic. And comes down to the ease of keeping watch, I think the enclosed bridge was a lot better because we had everything at our arm's reach. You could sit on the cockpit chair and just chill. The traditional the traditional bridge is very reminiscent of what I'm used to from the time I was a cadet. It's all converted into individual slots of equipment. At the center, we have our steering stand. The gyro compass here is digital, completely digital. Central repeater, automatic identification system, two EGDISs. We're using the Furono FMD, which is a pretty decent EGDIS compared to what I've been using on my previous ships. Two radars. And this is our main control panel. We have our main phone here, sound powered emergency telephone. This is basically used in case you have a blackout, you can use this phone over here emergency stop switch general alarm main engine emergency stop standard engine fixed pitch propeller very different to what i've been using again i was using controllable pitch propellers which was a lot better so yeah there are some pros and cons navigation light fairing motors christmas tree lights sound controller power thruster even though this is a bigger ship than what i normally do and it's a lot bigger than the orthel ship uh, we do have a bow thruster and of course the vdr system right here So a lot of people always ask me about the uniforms that we have. In this company, we wear white uniforms. But after talking to our captain, after taking his permission, we have a Russian captain on board. We requested him if we can wear civil clothes because we have long voyages and maintaining our uniforms can get really hard. So we only wear our uniforms in port. And normally when we're out at sea, we can dress in civil clothes. He wants a collared t-shirt and he wants shoes. So basically that's what we try and maintain. He doesn't mind if he wears shorts, he wants us to be comfortable. It is a pretty good working environment between the master and the officers. He's very approachable and he gives us a good amount of freedom on the bridge. Of course, we can't play any music, we can't have any distractions. All of that is still a factor and we still have to maintain that level of discipline. But when it comes to our attire, when it comes to like having food on the bridge or anything of the sort, he's very, very flexible and it's really, really comfortable on this ship. So I don't know if you guys noticed, but this is a much, much bigger ship. The last few years, I've been 
doing ships which are barely 110 meters in length. This is almost 150. It's very different and you know for me in the position of additional chief mate I think there's a lot that I can learn here because I haven't done these kind of ships and this was also one of the main factors for me leaving Oddfell. The promotions were very slow there. The kind of ships that I did were all the same. They were all sister ships so at one point I'd stopped learning. The transition's been unique and different and surprising but a lot of fun nonetheless. Money. Third officer just came to take over watch. I'm probably going to be coming back to the bridge to chill with you. Because today I'm not going down with Chief Officer. I have plenty of jobs pending on the bridge, so that's the plan for today. I'm gonna to go down, get some breakfast, come back up, complete all my pending work on the bridge because I've been spending so much time on deck. It's crazy. So I'm back in my cabin, uh, Saturdays are generally slow days on board. It is pretty dark in here, but this is the maximum lighting that I have in my cabin. The main light on top is on. So let me give you a quick walkthrough. Everything's a little messy because the ship is rolling like crazy. So everything keeps flying, but I have my MacBook here, iPad mini, table light here to go with all of this. So you guys can see it more clearly. GoPro charger, box of nuts, bunch of different cosmetic items, stuff that we need on a daily basis, MagSafe charger. My bed is a complete mess at the moment, but uh, that's cause I got up at three 45 and ran up to the bridge for a watch. Uh, here's where we keep our fresh water, a little bit of Red Bull, can't say no to that. We have a washroom right here and that is the storage space. It's a pretty small cabin. I have sufficient charging ports over there so I can charge my switch, my MacBook, my iPad, my camera gear. So yeah, this is basically where I live at the moment. The Chief Officer's cabin is a lot bigger. You guys got a glimpse of it in the previous vlog. And if everything goes as per plan and I do end up taking over when the Chief Mate goes home, then you're gonna get to see a Chief Mate's cabin tour and I'm really excited about that. There's a lot of work to be put in before that so see. This is the cargo control room. I think you guys have seen this place before but yeah chief mate is supposed to be here. I think he's out on deck checking something so I'm gonna go get some breakfast and then you guys get to say hi to the chief officer. Nina, good morning. Lower deck where we come for our meals. This is the office of mess. Morning, morning. This is my brother. Hello. We've sailed together twice. This is our hat trick. Twice. He was second mate, I was third mate. He was third mate and I was cadet. And now he's chief mate and I'm additional chief. So it's pretty cool. So Chief Officer and me have been sitting together for a while and this is his first contract. It is hopefully going to be mine as well. I'm not sure. But uh, sir, how's life as chief mate? Life as chief mate? Yeah. Honestly, the transition from second mate to chief mate. I have a lot of cadets who watch this channel and they all want to know how is the transition, especially on a chemical tanker where we are loading multiple parcels. Operations can be very hectic. Ah, so wait, Anand, like if you you are always seeing the things, now you are physically doing the things and you are taking care of things by yourself. Right. Things change a lot. So, big change in life? Yeah. Course. Is it better? Is it harder? Big growth. Big growth. You require change. Yeah. So you think it's important to jump the rank after Shipping you've done you always work. require. Yeah. You should never be stuck to a rank for a long time. Okay. Unless you have a comfortable company. Right. Okay. You know, you're comfortable in your job. Right. Between handling the bridge and handling the entire ship now as you also. It's a big jump, but do you feel a lot of pressure continuously yeah, or? It's a ratio of 1 to 100. <laughs> 1 to 100, right? You guys have heard it from the man himself. 1 to 100 is the ratio when you jump from second officer to chief officer. This entire concept I'm additional chief. We don't have this concept in a lot of companies. Uh -huh. What do you think of this? Like, you, were you additional chief before this as well? Did you get this opportunity? Do you think it's a big move and other companies should also start implementing such things? The company is planned, you know. So okay. And uh, follow the companies. Uh, have the setups, you know, right. for promotion and training. Some good companies also have like training since you become sort of depends on company to company how they are promoting. Okay. But it mainly depends on you. Whenever you are ready, you should go for it. <laughs> right, sir. You guys just spoke to the chief officer on board. Uh, like he said, the responsibility changes massively and I can feel the pressure falling on me every day. While I'm in charge of navigation at the moment, I see him working. Today being a Saturday, everyone is off. Chief officer doesn't keep watch on this vessel, so he should have been off, but he's doing ballast exchange. So he's the only person working on deck right now. So basically, this is what I was talking about when I said being additional chief is super, super different. My life has changed drastically on this vessel.
Naturally. Natural. 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 <laughs> Back on the bridge, getting some coffee with Tarasa. Still preparing roots. So Tarasa is from Kerala. You was telling me about Toddy. Gar pe Toddy hai? Toddy, Toddy, very good Toddy. Natural. Natural Toddy. You make it at home. Yeah. Excited to go home. Yes, excited to go. Okay, so he's excited to go home, but I'm going to make sure he does not leave the ship until I leave the ship because he's my teammate. No way. And I'm not. I'm not going to let my team split up. So we all are going to go home together. Correct, women. So route planning is pretty much never ending. We're getting a cup of coffee. It's ten o'clock in the morning now. As you guys can see, the deck crew is still off. The ship is sailing. This afternoon we have a little bit of a party scene happening. We're alcohol-free ship, so it's not really a party. Just a gathering with some food, but uh, it's better than nothing. So hopefully that'll go well. You enjoying your vacation day? No. No. Still thinking about the job? Yeah. Pending jobs. See, pump man and his pending jobs. It's never ending on these ships. Papi, you ever been on the blog before? Yep. I'm going during this campaign period. Oh. And your boss? Yeah. For your firefighting? No. Oh. For him to get this little bit famous on the net or uh -huh. for his campaign. For his campaign, he, he ran. That pump man is super well connected. He's a firefighter back home in Philippines, and he is definitely the head of all the technical jobs on deck here. Also, for those of you who actually follow the tech aspect of this channel, you all know I love my iPad Pro. But you all also know I've only carried my MacBook Pro 14-inch and my iPhone and my iPad mini which is over here now the iPad mini has been pretty great on its own it's been a great device but I haven't ended up carrying my iPad Pro and there are some pros and cons to this honestly the iPad mini is a great note taking device i think it's fantastic for what it is but when it comes down to watching content and you're lying in bed while it's really convenient and small the screen is no way half as good as what i had on the iPad Pro it has been a pretty long day i've been up since 4am so i am super tired but uh, let's see how the rest of the day goes in mind this is a weekend in the atlantic ocean and this is how long our days can actually be at sea what's up what's up What's up? Welcome to my vlog. Welcome to your vlog, eh? Ten years, Jim? Yeah. yeah. Almost ten years later, we met again. This is our very favorite third officer. We met after. We met hours. after a couple of days. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah of course, you guys know Bibin Tao. Bibin Tao is my half Japanese, half Asian, mm -hmm. half Malu third officer on board. It's officially known report time, and our additional second officer is actually doing the known reports now. He's been working really, really hard to become second mate, and he knows practically everything about the actresses, everything about the reports, everything about road planning. Pretty much ready to take over as second mate. So I'm hoping if I get promoted, he gets promoted. You ready? Yeah, we're ready. Awesome. Currently heading down for the. Sunday party session. That was the little celebration that we had today. Basically, on most ships you have barbecue parties, but on tankers you cannot have barbecue parties even if they are gas-free because it's not allowed as per our company policy. So our cooks basically barbecued the food in the galley, brought it out onto deck, played a table like I showed you, and everyone got some nice food, sat together, ate, and that's basically how we spent our weekend in the Atlantic. I'm back again on the bridge right now. This is pretty much the end of this vlog. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you guys are pumped for more episodes from Life at Sea. I'm definitely going to see you guys in the next one. In the next video, we're going to be heading from Argentina and going all the way to New Zealand, passing the Megalin Straits. So stay tuned. The most amazing and gorgeous time-lapse trip passing through the Megalin Straits. See you next time.